Good morning, diners, and uh, welcome uh, once again back to the cooking zone of the Doomstead Diner and uh, our uh, bug out section 8 cooking apparatus, our trusty hot plate. And uh, today we're using a non stick pan, and you'll see why in a, a minute or two. Um, okay, for this morning's breakfast. We're uh, changing up a little bit. We're getting away from the Western, American, European, etc. style of breakfast, usually with eggs and potatoes and beans and whatever, uh, biscuits and gravy, all that good fatty stuff. Uh, and we are uh, turning Japanese. Yes, I'm turning Japanese. I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. And uh, in the... Uh, world of shit hits the fan here in Alaska um, Japanese is a good choice because uh, for our breakfast meat this morning uh, we're not gonna have bacon we're not gonna have ham we're not gonna have sausage none of those things none of those products although you can raise pigs in Alaska so you know I expect there will still be uh, bacon ham and sausage as well as pork chops and baby back ribs and those things now whether or not I'll be able to access them afford them if there will be money that works I don't know uh, so uh, but for this morning I'm having fish which I can access myself or at least I used to be able to before my arms were crippled uh, by fishing right uh, and so we are gonna have for our breakfast meat uh, salmon Okay, the famous Alaska salmon. Doesn't that look good? Okay, um, and uh, you could, if you're going Japanese, right, you can go uh, a couple of different styles there. I could have cut this up for sashimi, which, uh, you know, in many occasions I would do. Uh, because I really like uh, raw fish. But a lot of people don't. And uh, so we're going to cook it this morning. And uh, the style that we're going to do is uh, uh, we're going to do salmon teriyaki. Uh, and it's a really fast and easy preparation. Uh, there's not a whole lot to this. And you can get it done just about as fast as it will take you to cook up some bacon. Okay, now uh, one of the things you want to do with your salmon is uh, you want to eat the skin. I mean, the skin is really the best part, okay? Uh, and uh, you see I've got some skinny pieces like that one and then some nice fat pieces like that one, okay? And that's because they come from the different uh, end sides or bottom and top of your salmon. Uh, one is, this is a belly tuna uh, or salmon and uh, it's fattier uh, and good but it's uh, skinny, right? Uh, so, uh, you'll note that there really isn't any oil in my pan, and that's why I'm gonna use this uh, non-stick uh, pan, because if I used the uh, cast iron uh, this way, uh, chances are it would stick. Uh, so, the tuna, the tuna, the salmon itself has lots of fat in it and in a very short order it will render out the fat and so uh, it will be uh, cooking but what you want to do on the uh, skin side here is you want to slit the skin some to allow the fat to come out and what I'm using here for this procedure is a straight razor okay you don't get sharper than a straight razor and salmon skin is tough I mean even with my really sharp uh, kitchen knives you kind of got to saw through it and you kind of can wreck your fish 
when you do that. So if all you're doing is slitting the skin, then a straight racer is really good. Just takes a couple of passes and poof, you're through the skin. Okay? And uh, besides letting the fat out, why do you do this? Well, the reason is because your skin will come out crispier. And uh, crispy skin is much nicer than soggy skin for salmon. Okay? So I suggest slitting the skin before you go through this procedure. Okay? And there's this one. I've got two more to do. Do do do. Try not to slit my fingers along with slitting the skin. Always a danger when you're working with sharp knives. Okay, last one. I think we'll just do one down the middle of this one. It's kind of skinny. And here, once again, you want to try not to damage the fish flesh too much by squeezing it and mushing it around, uh, which I did when I was cutting it up earlier. And that's what this little pile of uh, chunks is. But it's going to get cooked too, and it'll be perfectly edible. Uh, it just won't be as pretty. Uh, so, okay. Now we'll turn up the heat a little bit. And I've had it on warming. And we'll check our temperature. You're going to want it pretty hot. Okay. But not screaming hot. Okay. Uh, and you're going to want to get that skin nice and brown. Uh, currently, we are only at 272. Uh, so we need to get a little hotter than that. Uh, I'd like to see it in the mid 400s or so. Uh, not over 500, really. Uh, preferably. Oh, and I am going to need a spatula. Always forgetting something. Mm. There we go. Spatula. Going to want to get under the uh, fish and uh, not let it start sticking to the pan. Well, when we do this, mm, temperature's starting to come up. Mm, no, not hot enough yet. 259. Do, 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 do. Let's go turn up a little more. And uh, I've mentioned this before in prior cooking shows uh, that the electric hot plate does have the deficiency that uh, it's difficult to control the heat um, and so that often presents a problem when you are trying to get your, your stuff ready. And let's get a little more centered there and see if we can zoom in just a little bit. Okay, that should be pretty good. Uh, I do prefer to cook over an open flame, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, and if you're in the situation of a bug out, and you have electricity, uh, for instance, in a campsite, or in a Bates Motel, um, or even in a uh, storm shelter of some type, you know, a public storm shelter, there, you know, there's electricity usually in those places, and... Uh, these electrics are good because, uh, you know, a lot of places don't want you to have an open flame indoors, but they'll let you use uh, electric cooking apparatus, uh, you know, even though they can start fires too, but uh, that's just the way it is. So, uh, I highly recommend having electric cooking apparatus, and we've been using mostly the uh, electric hot plate for are cooking uh, some use of the toaster oven, the electric toaster oven, uh, uh, but one, uh, the third main, what I call primary electric devices 
for cooking we have not yet used and I'm gonna have to do a recipe for that here pretty soon uh, okay I think we're hot enough now yeah 367 will do it's gonna continue to heat up here pretty quick so let's start dropping in the salmon and you can hear it sizzling right off the bat I'm gonna try not to dump it all over the floor And this is a fairly small pan, as you can see. I'm kind of wedging it all in there. Uh, I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. I do have a bigger pan that I could use, uh, but I didn't think I really needed it. I figured I could just about get away with this one, and I am getting away with it. And it does have its advantages, because uh, I'm going to be adding teriyaki, uh, making the teriyaki sauce okay and uh, let me get uh, this, goop, this fish goop off my fingers uh, this is going to be coated in teriyaki so I won't need to use so much teriyaki in a big pan I'll be able to use just the amount of teriyaki that I need to get my fish nicely coated up and we're going to add the teriyaki here in a minute or two we want to let that skin get browned up okay where did I do with that okay now let's go and look underneath these guys and see how they're doing okay mm, not quite brown enough but I'll just I'll turn it over I like it a little bit brown and now I'll turn it back okay now one thing here is these skinny pieces are going to cook through a good deal faster than the uh, than the fat ones, right? Uh, so they're going to have to come off earlier, and you're going to adapt your cooking a little bit uh, for them. And you can see them cooking. If you look on the side, you'll see them getting pink. Uh, front, uh, changing color from the sort of darker red into a pinkish color and uh, that lets you know it's cooking right and once I turn it over and then add this, uh, uh, teriyaki and everything that will help cook through the fat pieces uh, and I personally again uh, you know don't don't like it you know super overdone uh, you know uh, they talk about, a lot of chefs talk about it being flaky and whatnot throughout. You know, I'm not that big in it. I don't think that's that important. Uh, I like it to have that fish flesh uh, texture to it when I make it. All right, that'll do. Okay, not bad. And uh, you can see how much fish this is. I mean, this, I'm not going to eat all this fish for breakfast. <laughs> uh, but if I'm making salmon teriyaki, I might as well make the whole thing, you know. Well, I, I only bought a half a pound. It's not a full pound. And it was on sale for $9.99 a pound. It was a little over half a pound, so uh, I think it cost me six dollars. Uh, but I will have probably like one piece. So I'll probably either have this piece, or maybe I'll have the two belly pieces. That'll be nice and fatty and delicious. All right, uh, now it's time to start adding some sauces. We'll go with some soy sauce. Okay, and then. Traditionally, you don't use this stuff. 
but since I have it, I might as well use it, right? Uh, which is teriyaki sauce. Already made up. Okay, I'll put a little more in there because I got some more up. But it's empty. And then, to top it all off, if I can find room. Okay, we're going to add... special ingredient which is sake ah okay and that will make our sauce I'm gonna give it that nice sweet and pungent type of flavor that you get out of teriyaki Ah, that is so delicious. Let's get everybody in here. And our, this chunky salmon needs to be turned over. Finish it up. It's about done. Oops. skinny pieces in another 30 seconds and they're going to come out of there. Uh, plate. Got a plate up. So you might ask what might I do with uh, these other pieces of salmon that I'm not going to eat for breakfast this morning. Uh, very simple. They go in the fridge. Huh. And uh, salmon, particularly salmon cooked this way, keeps very well in the microwave as well. So I can have salmon for breakfast again tomorrow morning. Which I probably will do. Or I can have uh, salmon for lunch or dinner. Uh, which I may also do. Because... I love fish. Uh, but no, in reality, I won't eat the same food every day. And, you know, all day for every meal. Uh, that just gets boring. Okay. And uh, another thing about this meal as a whole, going to cost and all that stuff, um, is that... Uh, It, it's more expensive than the meals that we've been going through, which, you know, all stay well under the snap card budget. Uh, this one, for the meal itself, is going to go over the snap card budget. If it was just breakfast, you know, it's probably going to cost $2.50 to around $3 if I add up all the costs by the time all this other stuff is going in to the breakfast. But, uh... I wouldn't have this, a meal of this size, for uh, just breakfast. It would be brunch, a combination of breakfast and lunch together. And... That brings its cost into well into the uh, snack card range. Because if you figure, like I said, the whole meal costs $3 at most, I think, uh, then if you add together, you get a $5 day budget, so $1.66 per meal for three meals in a day. So your first two meals you can add together dollar sixty six plus dollar sixty six is uh, three dollars and uh, thirty two cents. So you have more than enough money uh, to enjoy this breakfast. And I turned up the heat because I want to reduce this uh, and then spoon it over the salmon. 
and then it'll look really good. And it'll also taste really good, which is uh, even more important. Because I don't always get the prettiest food these days. I used to get a lot prettier food when the arms worked right. But as long as it eats good. Uh, so other things that are going to go in this meal. Well, what do you usually have salmon uh, teriyaki with? Um, you usually have rice. That's what Japanese and Asians in general uh, have with everything at every meal. Uh, that's their carbo of choice. So uh, it will go over a bed of rice and the rice substitutes for your potatoes. It's uh, the usual Western choice of carbo. Uh, although biscuits are chosen and other things as well. Pancakes. Um, and then... Uh, I'm going to have a soup with it. Uh, and again, this is something that's not that common in the American or European diet uh, for a meal. But in Asia, uh, soups of various kinds are very common for breakfast. And, uh, you know, you can... Uh, you can do them in, in a whole lot of ways that really make them okay. We're just about thick enough now. Just another 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Um, you can uh, you can do tons of different things with them, and you know put in what you like, and they don't have to be exactly like your regular soup during the day, but they can be. Uh, you know, if you like that type of soup, uh, have it for breakfast. Why not? Uh, okay, let's just pour that on there. And I'm going to scrape some out, out of there if I can do that. We'll get it out when we're off camera because I don't want to take up the time uh, here. And so the finished product here, folks, salmon teriyaki, uh, which uh, I am going to go and enjoy uh, here in a little bit. Uh, i got to let it cool just a little uh, before I uh, delve into it. And I've got my rice ready and my soup is ready. So I'll plate the whole thing up uh, and take a picture of it for you guys to see. I don't think you need to uh, be shown how to uh, steam or, or boil rice. That's not very hard. And the miso soup that I'm going to have, I've already been over in another episode um, doing how to do a soup amendation and make an easy miso. Uh, so I'm not going to repeat that here either. Uh, Okay, that's all the cooking doom. This time until next time, here on the cooking zone of the Doomstead Diner. Eat well in collapse. Later. <laughs>